Hello everyone! In my quest to find the best MS-DOS retro gaming laptops, today's focus is on the Toshiba Satellite Pro 425 CDT and make sure to stay tuned until the end for a bonus review of its docking station. You'll notice that I tend to review Toshiba's as they're still quite abundant and reasonably priced. The 425 belongs to the 400 series which was introduced around 1995 when CD-ROM technology was all the rage. The specs of the 425 checks several essential points that are necessary as a pure DOS gaming laptop. First, the CPU. It features a Pentium 100MHz adjustable quite intensively with Setmo. Secondly, it has a 2MB Chips and Technologies graphics chip to ensure excellent 2D DOS game support. Finally, the ESS688 and the Yamaha OPL3FM chip on the ISA bus promises great sound compatibility. This satellite pro is equipped with an 11.3 inch active matrix display with a native resolution of 800 by 600. Note that the CDS variant features a dual scan display, which I don't recommend due to its poor performance. It comes with an 82 key keyboard and an AccuPoint device common across Toshiba laptops of that period. In terms of connectivity, there's an infrared receiver, a VGA port, a parallel port, the docking port, power port, a PS2 keyboard mouse combo port. On the left, there's a 9-pin serial port, external floppy connector, two PCMCIA slots, a line-in and microphone 3.5mm jacks. In front we find the volume knob, standard 3.5mm headphones jack and a single monaural speaker. The hard drive is easily accessible under the battery compartment and is equipped with a standard 44-pin IDE connector. And there is no need for a proprietary caddy to plug in a storage drive. I'm using a 2.5-inch compact flash adapter and it recognizes up to 4GB cards. The RAM compartment houses one socket of a specific type capable of accommodating up to 32MB of EDO RAM, supplementing the onboard 8MB for a maximum of 40MB. On the right, there's a select bay that can accept either a floppy or optical disk drive. The initial 400 series model features an integrated AC-DC power supply which allows direct connection with a 2 prong C8 power cord. Subsequently, starting from the 400 model, they transitioned to using a 15 volt power adapter. Time to power it up. The BIOS settings is accessed by holding the escape key followed by the F1 key when prompted. The hardware video stretching setting maximizes screen display area in Pew DOS. Level 1 and level 2 caches are adjustable and can be set to write through or write back. There's also a throttle setting that can be adjusted on the fly by cycling through the function and F2 keys combo within any OS. You can also set the sound blaster ports and interrupt of the sound subsystem. However, I do not see any MPU 401 MIDI setting. The VGA address is adjustable as well for loading drivers and TSRs more efficiently. As a result of the BIOS and VGA ROM mappings, I obtained 597 kilobytes of conventional memory with mouse and OAK CD-ROM drivers installed. This should be plenty for any DOS games. Let's now check the performance tuning capabilities of this laptop. I'm using Setmol here. While you cannot adjust the frequency multiplier, it claims support for branch prediction code cache, data cache, and the V-instructions pipeline tuning. So let's test them out. 3 d bench results indicate that while Setmul has full access to all CPU switches, its performance impact is not as granular as on the Pentium MMX variants. But the good news is, the ability to adjust the cache mode and CPU speed directly at the BIOS level makes up for it, if not better. This is a feature quite unique to Toshiba laptops, and we see performances that closely match that of CPUs of interest namely the 386 and 486 33MHz. This is important for CPU-sensitive games such as Test Drive, Wing Commander and Ultima 7. I do still prefer the higher spec 440 and above models for the MMX CPUs though, which allow better fine-tuning and provide additional top-end power for more demanding games such as Quake. Before running some games, let's configure audio. Configuring the hardware settings can be accomplished using the ESSCFG utility. However, it doesn't seem that there's an MPU-401 interface present. The ESS Vol utility provides for some basic sound mixing. And since the ESS chip is connected via the ISA bus, we only need to set the blast environment variables to match those of the BIOS settings. Unfortunately, there's no hardware wavetable, nor an external MIDI port. 
but you can use a parallel port S2P module from Serdeco with soft MPU. And using the integrated line in connector, MIDI module outputs can be merged with internal audio without a separate mixer. Make sure to keep watching till the end, as I'll be testing it with a docking station that features a game controller MIDI port. Although there's hardware scaling, unlike other Toshiba models, MCGA Mode 13H and Mode X do not display in full screen. Fortunately, there is the FEX P utility designed specifically for the Chips and Technologies graphics chip. Much better. VexP scales the graphics across the entire screen, but with the native panel resolution at 800x600, don't expect pixel-perfect rendering. With the proper CPU settings, this Toshiba runs speed-sensitive games such as Wing Commander, Ultima and Test Drive 3 smoothly at enjoyable speeds. <laughs> <laughs> As for 3D games like Quake, do not expect any miracle. It's playable at up to 360 by 480. The graphics card does not support any higher resolutions. The display is corrupted at 640 by 480 and above. Today I have in hand this port replicator. It features a MIDI game port and I'm hoping it will allow me to connect an external MIDI module and a game controller. These units come up from time to time on eBay or thrift stores. You just need to be patient and be on the lookout. The system successfully identifies my game controller. However, there's no MIDI signal coming out. ESSCFG was unable to activate the MPU 401 interface, and Windows failed to detect it as well. After doing some more tests with my other Toshiba laptops, I've come to the conclusion that unless the MPU 401 setting is present in the BIOS, there's no guarantee of getting any MIDI signal on the docking station even if it's mentioned in the official datasheet. Nevertheless, the inclusion of a game controller alone could be the reason enough to consider acquiring the port replicator, as it significantly elevates the gaming experience. The 425CDT lacks the power for Windows 98 DirectX games, but this operating system comes in handy for file transfers. I noticed Toshiba recently took down several of the download servers for legacy drivers, but thanks to the use of common components, it is quite easy to obtain them if not already included in the standard Windows 98 installations. This laptop supports only the older 16-bit PC card standard, and I couldn't use my 32-bit cardbus USB adapter to connect the thumb drive. Alternatively, we can use a PCMCIA to compact flash adapter to transfer files. 
In conclusion, if you come across this particular model at a reasonable price, it's worth considering as it proves to be a highly capable DOS gaming platform, handling most titles up to 1995 with ease. The docking station is a nice addition, albeit bulky. It adds connectivity for a game controller. But bear in mind that the 425CDT will not provide any MIDI signal, nor 32-bit card bus support, even if the connectors are physically present. And I'm giving it a score of 3.6 out of 5. In my next review, I'm going to test this compact Armada 7800. And behold, it has a hardware wavetable. But since it's a Pentium 2 system, can it be slowed down to 386 and 486 levels? We'll find out in the next episode in my quest to find the best laptops for gaming in pure DOS. If you enjoy my videos and this channel, please show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you soon.